Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Got to be the best fishing show on YouTube, I think, guys, don't you? Now, for beginners, when you go fishing, you're looking at a vast expanse of water. Now, that could be a lake, it could be trout fishing, beach fishing, sea fishing, doesn't really matter, fresh water, rivers, anywhere. It's just a big void of seemingly empty water. But it's not. Now, what you've got to get in your head is to throw, is to, well, you've got to try and think like a fish. And you'll find that most of the good anglers actually do think like a fish. The really good anglers don't talk at all. They just keep going like a fish. You know, it's true. You need to think and look at everything from the perspective of the fish. Now, you can read. I've got loads of books. and I've read loads over the years. You can get stuff like DVDs. You can get DVDs. They'll help you as well if you get fishing. DVDs. They'll help you out a little bit. But especially if you're sea fishing, it is a wide open vista out there. Of course, now you do have charts and you do have electronic wizardry and gadgetry that can help try and narrow everything down. Now, in this little episode, I want to try and sort of explain to you a little bit of the way you can actually look for marks that could be where the food is going. In this case, I'm not sort of thinking like a fish itself. I'm thinking of the food of the fish. Where's it going to be? What's it going to be doing? How's it going to be affected by the tide? They're all small tips, very small tips, but might just get you that extra fish or two. Let's go over to the old Totally Awesome Office desk. There's a 12 volt battery on it though. It's a bit weird, isn't it? See what's on there. Okay, now if you're going out on a boat, you obviously need to know where you are going. You should therefore invest in, and they're not cheap, Admiralty charts, or the equivalent of a set of charts for the area you're going to fish in. Now, I don't know whether this is true or not, but I did hear if you go out to sea in a boat, a kayak, anything, and you do not carry the charts relevant to the area that you are working in, and you then unfortunately, God forbid, have a crash, sink, ram into somebody else's boat, etc., that you're not insured. Now, that's something worth thinking about. So, wherever you're traveling to, if you trail your boat around, you need charts for that area, so I'm told. I mean, to me, it's common sense. You know, you wouldn't, it's like driving down the motorway the wrong way. You know, you need a set of charts to know what's on the seabed so you don't run into anything. But there you go. Check that one out anyway, guys. So here's a set of charts. Now, if you're thinking like a fish, you should be looking at these charts and realizing that the sea is a moving medium of water. It goes in and out, along, left and right, with the cycle of the tides. Now that cycle of the tides is going to be affecting the food on the seabed. And that's the way I look at it. I'm not sort of, well I am thinking like a fish. Well I'm part fish anyway, I've got fins underneath this t-shirt. You should be thinking like a fish, but you should be thinking like the food that the fish eat. I'm working out where they're going. Now I've never been to these two places before, but there's a couple of marks here. I'll probably go out with Wayne on high sea drift on my boat. And we're going to poke around and have a look, see what we can catch there. But I just wanted to show you how to get a sort of a definition on what to look for on a mark. Now, binoculars on, got two pairs, you know, in case one doesn't work, I can use the others. So in here, this is the southern coast of England. There's the Isle of Wight is there. I'm coming out from North Knee Marina and we're traveling out to a spot just off the memory bank and also two, between two boys called the Puller and the South Puller Boy. Uh, there is the Puller Bank noted, you know, just off here as well. It's off basically, it's off Celsi Bill. So if you're a worldwide angler, it won't have any meaning to you. But do you know what? It's a similar thing wherever you are in the world. You need to research in the charts and listen, do a bit of pioneering. It's all very well listening on the radio, getting a bit of fisherman's gossip as to where the fish are biting. But there's quite a buzz when you come to go and do it all yourself. A bit of pioneering fishing. You pull up a paper chart like this and you think, do you know what? I quite fancy fishing this area here. Now this chart obviously has a lot of the detail you want, it has the depths, um, you know, it's obviously got the longs and lats so you can, you know, you can get a ruler and a pencil and you can mark out where you want to fish on there. It doesn't carry the definition that the new charts do, the chart cards that go inside your plotter and sounder. Now I'm all new to this, but I'm definitely not new to fishing, but I'm going to be utilising these chart cards We've got Navionics uh, Platinum one in our um, Lowrance HDS 7 touchscreen, I think it's called. And having played with it a couple of times, I'm very impressed with it. So here we are. There's the chart card there. 
you can see where we begin to come out. We've got memory bank there, and we've got the puller bank here. But even though there's the hole I want to fish just in here, and there's a circle within that hole, in other words, there's a depth within a depth, the chart card shows more than this particular chart does. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, now, put the chart away. I've actually got my uh, low wrench unit in here from the boat and I've wired it up to a 12 volt battery down there so that at least I can, I can play around with it in here and it's much better. I could have done it out, out of sea but the boat's pitching all over the place. I figured it just might be easy to show you on the screen and if you're like me, a bit slow with things, a bit slow on the uptake, you might want to look at this and then you can rerun it twice, can't you? You can always have a look at it again. But this is how I'm going to be looking for these two marks. Let's get it fired up. Okay, so this is what you get when you start with a Navionics Platinum Chart card. This is on the, as far out as I can zoom, and as you can see, it covers all around, you know, Hungary, Europe, England, Ireland. There's a huge amount of um, area it's covering. And my little 17-footer will not be fishing off the coast of Spain, so a lot of it I won't be using. This area I will be between, you know, the southern half of England around to Ireland I'll be using. So that's what it starts with. As you see, it's broken down into charts similar to the Appleby chart. So then all I do is I'm going to go in on this. Now, this gives you an idea of the definition these do go in on. You can just keep zooming in, going past Germany, France, to the south coast of England. And we're going in and in and on the south coast of England. London's up here. There's the Isle of Wight. Now, I've already pre-marked some uh, areas there. I'm going to keep going and going, and you might recognise that basis from the Admiralty chart that we had early on I showed you. But once you get in closer, you'll start to pull in, wow, loads of information. Now, there's the south coast, that's just the corner there, I'll just zoom, actually you know where you are, that's a corner of the Isle of Wight. Big curve of land here, okay, it's big curve of land, and it comes around here to Selsey Bill on the top. Now, any tide going east and west, which are west going ebbing and flooding, is going to hit this, come off this point here, and come across here scouring out. Now that would be a good place for food to go, a lot of tide there on big spring tides. And the same, conversely, when it goes the other way, the tide is going to hit this curve of the beach, the shoreline, the landmass, come around and kick off out there. So if, if you can imagine, just lean across get this pen here. There's the tide coming along here, it also comes around from the island, so you, you're getting a visual of now, what will be happening to the water? Well, it's going to be coming that way one tide, isn't it? So remember that line there, okay, like that. And it's going to be coming the other way. It's going to be coming there where the tide tells you. Oh, look, there's a sort of crossover point, isn't there? There's a crossover point, you know, down in here somewhere, just down in that general area of, a, you know, a couple of three square miles. There's an area, to me, that on both states of the tide, the fish could well be in. Any food that's tumbled along with the tide might just hold up here. Now then, Here's my, really is, is, is my idea of thinking. Try and imagine along the seabed, all this food is trundling along, and when it comes to a dip or depression, right, it's gonna tumble over that depression, and the current should be going across the top of that depression. Therefore, any food, it could be crabs, it could be shellfish, it could be worms, it could be small, tiny fish, it could be anything. Detritus is the word we use. That means any sort of foody rubbish that the fish eat tumbles along the seabed, rolled along like this with the current, and then there's a depression, and it goes pop, and it just lays in that little depression, just off the back of the bank, in a hole, effectively. Those fish will move in there and find it. It's up to you to get out there, use this chart, and try and find something like a hole, or a depression, or a feature, or even, let's face it, a channel, which is gonna funnel any food from out here down narrower, right towards where those fish will be. The fish will be there. There's no question the fish will be where the food is, and they know the tides better than we do. They live in it, don't they? They live in it. So this is what I'm gonna zoom in on and show you a hole that we're gonna go out and have a try at, and then conversely, another one closer to shore because the tide's a bit strong out there. Two, are, two places, I've never even been there before, just looked on the chart, thought, do you know what? We'll give it a go. This is what it looks like. Okay, so remember, that's a sort of crossover point where I think the current is gonna hit here and come across there, hit here, come across there. Now just look here, Around and about at that meeting point is a big hole there. Now, that hole, it's a well-known area, it's a good fishing area, but that hole has some more information in there that we can get off here that we can't get on the chart. On the chart, it shows 
that extra hole just in here, it doesn't show the second one. Let's just zoom in. So we're going in and in and in. There's Boulder Bank, in case people want to know where Boulder Bank is. Now, much more detail here. You can see there's a quite a steep drop off here. Not so much of a, a big drop off here. So that food, to me, in this giant hole here, could be an area that food rests up in. Now, just to tell you where we are, just up here, I'm going to point to it first there. On the tip there is the puller boy. That's the puller boy. Further down, just down here, there's a wreck and there's a similar icon and S puller. That's a south puller. So it's between, as you can see, the puller and the south puller is this big hole here. Okay, but within that hole, if you look just here, I'm just going to tap there. There's a nice deep hole within that big area. So what we're doing is we're narrowing down the area where that food is. We're narrowing it down and narrowing it down, narrowing it down. Look at it. This one also is marked on there. Now, with the tide going backwards and forwards, I think either of these two holes could work. And what we're going to do is going to go out and give it a crack, probably anchoring just up from this hole because the tide's going to be going that way. It's going to be um, ebbing in our case here. And we're anchor up here and we want our bait to go back over in this hole and match where we think the natural food might have tumbled into. Now when the tide turns around and comes the other way, back this way, back from this direction, we would pull the anchor up, steam the boat around, anchor here, and then put our bait back into that hole. Also the same for this hole here. We could do that as well. We can get right in on that hole there. Now that is, well, you can call it all the puller bank because it's between the, uh, the two puller boys. That's a deep water mark. Now that in itself can create some problems for those trying to anchor on the bottom with leads. Okay, so try and imagine if you're in shallow water, and this is the same, the same principle applies in shallow water. You've got to find a depression or you've got to find something that is going to hold some food, a channel, anything that narrows it down. If you're in, say, that much water, I don't know, I mean, this is on a scale. This is 50 feet. That there's 50 feet. Your lead holds the bottom. There's a pound of lead on the bottom, we'll say, and a line straight up and down. If you go into deep water, there's still a huge volume of water moving through. So we're going to that much depth water. That water is pushing against your fishing line. All the way down there, the area of your fishing line is added up, the diameter of that line, and pushing on the lead so it might swing the lead up, in which case you're not on the bottom where the food is. So remember, if you're out in deep water, use a strong enough lead, a heavy enough lead, to make sure it's absolutely nailed on the bottom. Now we're also going to be looking at another mark in here called street, which is a, a similar sort of food holding place where the food's going to get channeled through, but much shallower. Okay, let's pull out from where the, uh, the puller boy is. And this is for when, we, when the tide changes. It's going to be very, very strong out here. We're going to come in here. Now there, you can just see, there's Celsius build. There's a drying area there. And there is a channel, you can see, between the bank here. So I'm going to put the cursor there, about there. It's a little bit on the bank. In we go. And there's that channel. It says rocks, guys. This is why another reason why you need charts. Let's go in and take a look at it. Lots of contours. And there is, I'm going over a little bit, street. And you've done that so you see it. It's just a mark, it's called street. Now, within that, if you just have a look here, food can get piled through here with the current. It can also run all the way around the edge here. So we're going to try somewhere up here in the shallow water, just away from that bank in the hope that any current, residual current, might just flow in or out of that gap there, just through there. The majority of the current will be down the bottom, but it could trickle through here. And if there's food rolling through there, that's where the fish are going to be. So we're going to try outside by the South Puller Boy first. And then when the tide gets too strong, we're going to come in here. So two areas that you need to look for for fishing. Of course, the next thing is... You've got the tips there to find some fish. Let's see if we can put into practice that which we preach. All right, guys, well, we're on uh, a mark here south of the puller bank. Um, what the puller is, it's uh, you've got the boulder bank, which is uh, an extension from Selsey Spit. And as it runs north to south, it turns and goes uh, east to west, and that's called the puller bank. And uh, we're just south of it in some deeper water, probably about 90 feet where we are. Um, we're hoping for taupe actually, because
because uh, now's the time for the, the big females. Unfortunately, as has been the way of the last few years, the mackerel are very, very difficult to come by. And uh, I've been noticing this for, for a long time now, and I've been moaning to a few people, everyone who listened basically, but there's distinct lack of mackerel around. And um, it's not just this season. I mean, people will, will catch a few, and they'll say, oh, there's plenty. Well, if a shoal goes under you, no one's saying they're hard to catch, okay? If you, know, if you, if you get them under you, you, you'll pick them up, we know that. But you could come out from Langston Harbour a few years ago, and travel the distance to here, and this time of year you would see birds working. And you just head over to the birds working, you feather up what you needed for the day, easy peasy. It's changed, it's really changed. I can't remember the last time I just I saw you know birds working. You see them sometimes over by the forts, over by um, where we call the blocks. But out here, it's uh, it's, it's just not happening, and uh, it's a worrying thing really, because let's face it, we've all took mackerel for granted over the years. Well, if they suddenly become a bit of a rarity, that will be a very bad thing. But anyway, I've got something on here. I'm not 100% certain what it is. I feel it may be a ray, funny enough, but... Um, We've had a couple of dogs and a small smoothie. Um, it's just still a bit early. We've got a bag on the anchor as well. We've got a bag on the anchor, a bag on the top. Let's just show the folks while Wayne's winding that fish up. I've got uh, a bag there full of raptor oil which is unpurchasable and magic and it's making I don't know whether you'll pick that up on the uh, on the on the on the camera there but you can actually see the slick will come in there a little bit there you can see the ripple over here and the slick goes from there across to there they are just basically you're doing this well wow, that is really streetwise isn't it Wayne that what's that one doing I'm pointing out the slick. I think I've just, inv I've just invited some Los Angeles gangsters to come and shoot me. Sorry about that, but from there to there. And I've got my shark line way up here, up on the top there, right up on the top. It's up out the way and just loose ratchet. And it's just a bonus. We're very early in the season, it's the middle of June. There might be a shark out here. It's not a shark area we fish, is it really? But you just never know out here. You will get the odd shark here. There was a Paul Beagle caught very near to here a couple of seasons ago while the guys were tape fishing. Not, not a big pack fish, about 100, 100, 100 That'd have been pounds. on the bottom though, would it, Wayne? Uh, who knows? I, I couldn't tell you how they were filmed. I know they were tope fishing and they picked up the uh, Paul Beagle on the tope bait. Um, and of course, there's threshers certainly seen in this area. Absolutely. So. Uh, and obviously the Isle of Wight is Britain's top place for thresher shark. Anybody want to go for a thresher shark, you don't want to go anywhere else. I mean, Bristol Channel, you've got, you've got good pool beagle sharks, but obviously the south coast is the main area for sharks, and especially the thresher sharks. That was a ray, and unfortunately he's a little bit... Uh, oh, he's tail wrapped, you, yeah. could, you called it called it right there, Wayne. Well, it felt like it all the way up on the front. Oh, he's turned around now. Yeah, nice little form back, though. And as you can see, a lot of people want to go straight through with mono for the... Um, Tope, but personally I do like a small small bit of uh, wire leader. A friend of mine was using some very heavy mono the other day and the, the, the truth of it is tope have cutting teeth and they're close together. You got a bite, you got a bite, Graham? Yeah. You got a bite, middle rod. In fact two both of them, that one and that one's both gone. Well I look around after filming Wayne's ray there and I've got either a big doggy or a small tope on the end of here. Big lead, that's the only thing out here with the tides. It does seem like a big lump of lead at the moment, but where we've got the bag, we've got the chum bag on the anchor, let's take a look. Oh, smooth down. There we go. Guys, when you lift it, just make sure you don't get clouted around the head with your own lead, especially swinging and thrashing around. And that is... Calm down, ladies. There's your smooth out. Got a smaller one than this, so they're getting bigger, everything's getting bigger. Fingers crossed we actually get to see a tote. Would be nice. And if we do get a tote, I could take this smooth out, but we'll put this one back. If we get a tote, hopefully I can get a tag in it. And once I've tagged over on the North Devon coast, I've had caught, wait for this, off the coast of Spain. With the English weather, would you blame it for going to Spain? No. Oh, 
No, it's taking a bit of line anyway. I'm not sure, maybe a small hound. We, uh, we basically scoured down because uh, there was absolutely no point in in going for the, you know, for the, for the tope where we are at the moment. The, the tope do run through here, but the stage of the tide at the moment, it's more likely to be hounds and, uh, and bream. So we slightly scaled down and it, it was quiet, actually very quiet for about an hour. And suddenly the boys just started picking up. Very, very long, quiet spell, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah at least an hour with next to nothing happening. And then all of a sudden, we started getting little nibbles, bites. Some of them were definitely bream. I have a feeling this is poss possibly a, a hound. It doesn't feel very big, but anything's welcome at the moment because the fish has been really, really sketchy today. It's coming up heavy, isn't it, Wayne? Um, yeah, but I've got, a, I've, I've still got a pound weight on. Which, oh, um, you still got a big weight weight yeah. on there. It's, it's, it's not, a, it's not a big, it's not a massive fish, that's for sure. It might be reasonable, but it's not, um, it's not huge. I'd say probably a, you know, smallish hound maybe. Oh yeah, you called that one, you called it there, there we go, hound about six pounds. And that was on squid head, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Oh, easy now, fella. Now he's trying to go crackers. Come on, silly. He was quite early on, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, he's saved all his energy for the... Right. It's the sort of fun you get when you get a 20 pounder, or a 15 or 20 pounder right. on the leader. Come on, you. Let's have a go. Ah. Oh, he's got a small hook there somewhere as well. But there you go, a nice little starry, and uh, I shall pop him straight back now. Run off. Bream, isn't they? Gotta be bream. Looks like bream. Well, as I say, we downsized our baits, and there we go. Nice bream, yeah? Little bream there. You can see the small hook. He took a little strip of squid. So, uh, well, that was the tail end of the day. We're starting to get some bites now, so that's a smooth out of bream, and uh, I'm sure the other rods were tapping away. So, before we finally end, we should get a few more fish. You think it might be worth freshening up? I've got one more half bucket of uh, chum left, Wayne. What do you think? Absolutely, absolutely. I think, you know, the, all the rods were tapping away a moment ago, so things are just starting to happen. Anyway, I get this fella back. Well, after those bream, we've had another couple of bream. And we're starting to get bites now, but we've had to come out of that tide, it's so strong. And I think Wayne says here, down on the eastern white area, that you uh, you fish inside on the springs and outside on the neaps. And it seems to be proving right, because we had to come in. But of course, we're, we're now trying to catch some of these small fish bites, which are bream, on the <laughs> cow star stand-up sticks. But that, let's face it, that's what fishing's all about. You're trying to adapt all the time, change hooks, rigs, everything. As the famous Tommy Flowers, our cart writer, says, if it doesn't happen, make it happen. And we're making it happen. But on the wrong gear. This is quite a piece of free. That's, that's what you call a hole in the boat. And you couldn't do it with the charter skipper's boat, but we can do it on our own boat. Another bream, but look at the size of the hook. Now, something else we seem to be finding out, which Wayne says, bigger baits actually seem to be getting the bream, because you've always got a little bit left on there for the bream to come out. If you use small hooks all the time, then they can nibble a bit off and you're sitting there, you're just looking at a bare hook. But there we go, another little bream. What a good job, we keep changing, persevere. Are we going home yet? You know what the answer to that is, kids. This one is. Bye. Well, what we're doing to boost these bream bites up is I'm using this chum tube, I call it, with two big weights on it. I've used it before in my video, it's been very, very effective. And this is just straight raptor oil and bran. Loads and loads of bran. It goes very quickly. We've got through about three bucketfuls today. But I'll tell you what, it drives those bream into a catatonic state. <laughs> no, they do actually they do actually get sparked up. Every time we've been putting this tube down, we've been getting extra bites. And do you know what I mean? It's that late in the day, we decided we're not going to get out, we probably won't get the tope on the inside. It just goes to show you to keep adapting, 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 work at it. And I put this down without dripping it on the boat too much. And within a short period of time, I do believe we will have another bream to show you, I hope. Oh, I was holding my rod that time, just trying to fill these tiny bites. You see, bream are just stripping us. And you can't see the rod hooped over. 
It takes a big fish to do that. I think I might have picked another line up here. But I, I was holding it and I struck it. And it's a good fish. I don't know what it is. It can't be a bream. I might have a couple of my other lines as well. You don't use uh, many many rods on my boat, as you've seen before in the video. It's, 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 it's twangy. It's a good fish, though. It's a real good fish. Hopefully, there's enough memory on the card of the camera. It doesn't cut out. And I never get to see what it is, or you guys will. I'll, hopefully, I will. Luckily, this is on a decent... Uh, these are rod line hook. I've a little bit of hook, big, bigger hook on this one. It's a 4 0. Definitely not a bream, but I can't see what it is. Wang it like a hound. I think you're right. Wayne's shout was right yet again. It is a hound. But he's going very, very well. If you get these on light tackle, Wayne, they go really well, don't they? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah very powerful this fish. It's not a big one, you know. It's, it's a hound and, and 57 lines, including that bloke's over there half a mile away. <laughs> That's why he's fighting well. I can get him untangled for you, might or might not. I'll tell you, possibly balding on the suicidal. There we go. Oh! Oh! Some strength, these fish. My goodness. Come around here and be photographed. A tangle of line, guys. We won't be long, about 30 minutes from packing up, but we finished with a good day in the end. It's been a long day. Not been easy, is it, Wayne, today? Not at all. Not, not at, at all. all, but it's nice when you finish with some decent fish. Just jaw hook there, tangle or not, I'm taking it. As you all do. And by taking it, it doesn't mean taking it home, it means you take it as exactly. a catch. We're going to release it because. Uh, it all goes back. Yeah. You can eat hounds, but you know, we. Uh, I think it's far better to eat than fish in the sea, so. Uh, I'd sooner eat Matt Chippy, Wayne. I like putting all mine back. So there you can see. We actually did go out and get a few fish. It wasn't great fishing, it wasn't great fishing, let's face it. But by using that chart card and tightening down an area and thinking about where the food for those fish might be, not just the fish, the food for the fish, we did okay. On both marks, we caught fish on both marks and I've never even fished it before. All good news, I feel. I hope it gives you some tips there to at least go out, do a bit of pioneering, do a bit of experimenting. And do you know what? You could actually come up with some totally awesome fishing. Thanks for watching. There's gonna be some more coming like this. I've got lots of places. I'm gonna tell you where to go fishing. And do you know what? We might even give you the GPS numbers of them as well.